Welcome to lecture video series Renewable Energy Resources. Here module 1, we are going to see the chapter 2, Energy from Sun. And today's topic is Sun-Earth Geometric Relationship and Layer of the Sun. So we know that the Sun's energy, okay, there are two ways of energy is coming from the Sun, which is useful for our uh, domestic applications. Okay, one is the sun radiates the light energy, so light energy is converted into electrical energy. Sun radiates the heat energy, the heat energy is converted into mechanical energy and the electricity will be produced. This is the two major applications. So sun's energy is the primary source of all the energy for all the surface phenomena and the life on the earth. Okay, whoever in the earth needs a sun's energy. So, <clears throat> combined with the material of the earth, okay, so it may be like uh, uh, molecules which is very close to the earth by gravitational force are called as a atmosphere. So, this energy is utilized for survival of, okay, this energy is utilized for the survival of immense diversity of the life forms that the form there is a found on the earth. So, if we want to live in the earth, sun is the major resource for human being, for living things and for uh, other kind of um, uh, kinds, uh, kind of things also. So everything sun is the needed one. So sun is the powerful source of the energy which will provide the earth with much energy every hour it is collectively used in a worldwide. And one more thing, sun energy, solar energy, okay, sun's energy in the sense we are talking about the solar energy. So, solar energy is nothing but which is derived from the sun's radiation. So, it is important to uh, continuously harness and increase the use of solar energy for the clean and renewable energies. Uh, we can, uh, instead of uh, going for the fossil fuels, because fossil fuels are depleting in nature, that means it will be exhaustible after some decades. But if you talk about the solar energy, it is not a depleting in nature, it is inexhaustible. That means it is abundant. Only the drawback in the sense during night times or cloudy times or when the sun is not shining, that then the energy harvesting is very difficult from the solar. But for that also, if you are storing with the backup, then the applications can be used with the backup also. So that is the major uh, Resources, sun is abundant, sun's energy is called as a solar energy, is abundant energy, uh, renewable energy, it is uh, infinite energy, it is infinitely we will get it, lifelong we can get it. So if you talk about the fossil fuels or uh, any other uh, kind of um, uh, non-renewable resources in the sense, until the uh, completion of that particular uh, fuels or the particular um, uh, non-renewable resources we can utilize for example coal how many years you can use the coal anyway coal is a natural thing which is extracted from the earth but how many years it is an uh, it is like a one of the ore so that ore may be uh, obtained up to uh, some times uh, that is uh, up to 50 years or 60 years once it is over in the sense if you want to regenerate the same coal then you have to wait 1500 years it's not possible but solar energy is a uh, it is not a depleting in nature and it is eco friendly we can use it for many years so the global demand for the energy is always growing and conventional energy resources become costly to extract and people have started to utilize the energy which is obtained from the sun like a solar cell solar cooker solar uh, water heater so like that the people are changing day by day so sun is a single source of the renewable energy which emits the energy as an electromagnetic radiation at extremely large and relative constant that is 24 bar 7 throughout the year throughout the emission you will get the emission rate of this energy which is equivalent to produced in the furnace of a temperature of nearly 6000 6, kelvin if you could have harvest this energy coming from the uh, sun, just 10 hectares, that is 25 acres, the surface of the sun energy will be obtained. 
so the enormous energy is to supply the current energy demand in the world so next we are going to see about the sun earth geometric relationship what is the uh, relationship between the sun and the earth we know that sun is there here and earth is rotating over the sun okay earth is nothing but a rotation the earth rotation in the sense which is repo, which is always refers that spinning of the earth on the axis on its axis so one rotation takes nearly exactly that 24 hours we call it as a one day or in technical term we used to say that it is a solar day if one look down at the earth north pole from the space he will notice that the direction of the rotation is in the anti clockwise direction so opposite if is uh, true if other uh, earth is viewed from the so south pole if it is, is uh, standing in the south pole if it seems in the sense then it is opposite direction if it is in the north side in the sense it is in the counter clockwise direction so orbit of the earth around the sun orbit of the earth around the sun is called as earth revolution the celestial motion takes nearly 365 days 0.25 days so celestial motion to rotate the sun the earth will take that 365.25 days to complete one cycle so again the earth uh, earth's orbit around the sun is not a circle it is elliptical in nature the elliptical orbit this is nothing but it is not round in nature it is elliptical in nature so elliptical orbit causes the earth distance from the sun to vary annually if you see that march and september the earth is very close to the sun but if you see june 21st and 22nd and uh, december 21st and 22nd the earth is uh, far away from the sorry earth is far away from the sun so it is farthest from the sun so annual variation in the distance from the sun which will be uh, varied and uh, the amount of solar radiation intercepted by the earth is approximately 6 percentage so approximately we are saying that uh, january 3rd january 3rd it is very close and then uh, closest to the sun that is we call it as perihelion the earth is farthest from the sun on july 4th each year that is called as aphelion the average distance of the earth from the sun over one year one year period of uh, period is 150 million uh, kilometers so 150 million kilometers distance will be there so the earth orbits around the sun is elliptical in nature that means the center distance from the sun is approximately 9.3 into 10 power 6 miles that is 1.5 into 10 power 8 kilometers while the earth axis rotation makes daily and yearly revolution so sun also rotates on its axis approximately once in every month the earth rotation the axis of rotation that is polar axis is always inclined at an angle of 23.5 degree from the ecliptic axis the distance from the sun to earth varies nearly plus or minus 1.7 percentage over the distance so this caused the uh, solar energy which is reaching to the earth to vary uh, plus or minus 3 percentage during the year so the energy received at its peak in the sense 1st of January and the lowest energy is received in the sense it is a 1st of July the sun is 109 times greater than the earth in a diameter so sun appears to move across the sky in an arc from east to west but the uh, owing to the rotation of the earth around the north to south axis viewing the sun from the average miles it is nearly uh, it's sentence to 0.53 uh, 
degree uh, Celsius or degree that is angle in 32 minutes every 32 minutes that will be there next uh, we are going to see about the layer of the Sun how many layers of the Sun in the sense we know that the Sun is there in the sky we have we are seeing only one layer but internally we have nearly six layers of the Sun six layers present in the Sun the outer part of the sun we call it as corona now corona is very famous because of the covid virus but this corona is nothing but the outermost part of the sun and the next one is nothing but the chromosphere which is the next layer of the corona inside that it is orange red color atmosphere thousands of miles thickness after that one more layer is their photosphere layer the lower atmosphere what we are seeing in that whenever morning if you see that yellowish color one will be there or evening also you will find out that is nothing but photosphere region and next one is nothing but convection zone that is internal part this is convection zone and another one is a radiation zone and the central part of the sun is called as a core so there are six layers of the sun one is a core a radiative zone convection zone photosphere chromosphere and corona first core what is core in the sense it is the central part of the sun this is the core in that core the innermost layer of the sun is called as a core with a density of nearly 160 gram per centimeter cube which is 10 times that laid the core might be expected to be solid however the core's temperature is nearly uh, 1 crore 50 thousand 50 lakhs degree celsius it will be in the gaseous state in the core we have a fusion core fusion reactions which is used to produce the energy in the form of gamma rays and neutrinos so gamma rays are photon with the high energy and high uh, frequency the gamma rays are absorbed and re-emitted by many atoms on their journey when the gamma rays leaves the atom their energy is reduced and uh, the it's uh, each high energy gamma rays that leaves the solar envelope and become 1000 low energy photons and neutrinos are though extreme, extremely we are using as a non-reactive element and uh, the chemical containing elements which uh, neutrinos uh, react with the large pools in the mines and uh, which is used for the some of the operations so there is a molecule can take the neutrinos and becomes the radioactive elements from the amount of argon present the number of neutrinos can be calculated next one is a radiative zone or otherwise convection zone we used to say that it is a solar envelope so outside of the core is called as a radiative envelope which is surrounded by the convective envelope so outside is radiative envelope and which is covered by convective zone the temperature is 4 million Kelvin the density of the solar envelope is much less than that of the core the core contains 40% of the sun's energy in 10% of the volume that means solar envelope has 60% of the mass in 90% of the volume so solar envelope puts the pressure on the core and maintains the core's temperature solar envelope is cooler more opaque than the core it is less efficient for the energy to move by radiation heat energy starts to build outside of the radioactive zone whatever we are getting that heat no that is outside of the radioactive zone not from the core the energy began to move by convection in huge cells circulating gases will be there helium gas hydrogen gas many gas are inside that 
several hundreds of kilometer in diameter the convection cell is very nearer to the outside or smaller than the inner cell that is we call it as each cell which is present in the uh, zone we call it as a granule so the granules when observed through the telescope like a small tiny specks if you see that a small tiny specks will be there in the sun so the variation of the velocity particles cause the slight wave length next one is a photo photosphere so photosphere is the zone from which the sunlight is both seen and emitted if you see here this is nothing but the photosphere so core radiative zone and this is photosphere the photosphere is a comparatively a thin layer of lower pressure gases surround the envelope over the envelope it has only few hundred kilometers thick with the temperature of 6000 centigrade the temperature and the composition and pressure are uh, revealed by the spectrum of sunlight while you are analyzing the solar analysis spectrum the feature of the gas did not belong to any gas known on the earth that is we call it as a helium gas so here it is a newly discovered gas which is named as a helium in the name of scientist and the god of uh, sun in the greek next one is uh, chromosphere so chromosphere in the sense during eclipse only we can find out this red circle on the outside of the sun we can find out the circle is called as a chromosphere it's a red in color which is caused by the abundance of hydrogen so from the sun we are getting helium hydrogen so it if we mix with the o2 in the sense we are getting water so from the center of the sun to the chromosphere the temperature decreases proportionally as the distance from the core increases so the chromosphere temperature is nearly 7000 kelvin which is very hotter than the photosphere temperature continues to increase through the corona the last one is nothing but corona so corona is nothing but outermost layer of the sun or the crown we used to say that this is a crown the outermost layer the corona is very thin faint and it is very difficult to observe from the earth we can observe the corona only eclipses are happening with the help of telescope so which is nothing but uh, the sun is covered with a, a bright solar disk this is the outer layer and very dim million times dimmer than the photosphere so heat is the measure of the molecular energy the movement of molecules within the space so because the corona extends several million kilometers into the space so there is a lot of room of molecules to move so this movement that forms the source of solar winds high temperature of the corona which will force the ions to move fast in the millions of kilometer per hour so characteristics of characteristics of the sun so various parameters and distance to the earth composition density solar radiation temperature and rotations everything will be shown here this is the characteristics of the sun